Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. The official findings of an archaeological survey on the former Arawak burial ground, which forms part of the multi-million dollar Cabot development, has been released. The report gives an all clear for the continuation on development on Mount Hardy. More in this report. The former Amerindian burial ground and its archaeological significance today has been the focus of major media attention after concerns were raised by the St. Lucia National Trust. The developers, Cabot St. Lucia, based on the recommendations of the St. Lucia National Trust, engaged the services of eminent and internationally respected archaeologist, Dr. Reginald Murphy, to undertake a physical study of the area. He described his research as bittersweet from an archaeologist's perspective, as he had hoped to discover significant archaeological remains, but found nothing remarkable. Now, as far as the development potential or the archaeology of the site, we can say it's been almost totally eroded, washed out natural causes and vehicular traffic. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of that particular site. We did a complete comparison. We looked at where people excavated before. We found those spots. Um, they were gone, almost bedrock in most places. Then we looked at where the, the, the houses were located, because those are also mapped by the, the University of Leiden. They're completely gone. We looked at the burial ground area, that's all gone. And by the way, no complete individuals are found there, just partial remains of over 40 people. The study was a requirement of the local DCA as part of the approval process for Cabot to start works in that specific area. The local archaeological and historical society was asked to consult with the DCA to prepare the terms of reference for the study. President of the ANH, Dr. Winston Fulgens, confirmed the integrity of the survey. We advised the DCA. The advice that we gave was that a proper archaeological assessment was supposed to be done. The report has come back. We have read the report. The report are according to terms of reference. The report are also according to the normal um, archaeological assessment projects around the world. And we satisfied that the gentleman who did the work, Mr. Mr. Murphy, did what he was asked to do, and the report has met our terms. Dr. Murphy was also asked to give an expert opinion as to whether his findings hindered the developers from moving forward. All I can say is from professional archaeological opinion, opinion, there's nothing there of cultural heritage values, tangible values, worthy of, say, stopping a project. Uh, I mean, again, if I'm asked to make a decision, to, sh should they go ahead and do it? I look at the values of the job creations, you have to look at the economical values, I have to look at all those things and balance it out against heritage because heritage must be seen to be contributing financially, otherwise those sites are going to be saved. We have to look at the economic values of heritage. And this is a good example of you have a heritage site, you study it, and if you have to put the development in, you study it until there's nothing left and get everything you can out of it, and then you can develop it, but you have the historical document. This is the kind of case I think it, I would say yes, it could be developed at this point in time. The Cabot team has welcomed the findings. CEO of Cabot St. Lucia is Christine Thompson. Living in harmony with our communities is at the core of what we value as a corporation. And what that means is not only providing economic opportunities for the members of that community, but also respecting and protecting the flora and fauna on the site, the history of the site, the peoples that live there, the marine environment that surrounds the site, the conservation of scarce resources like water. So for example, on this course, we will use all drought resistant strains of grass so that we can serve whatever resources that we have and really protecting the environment in the best possible way that we can. One of the key recommendations of the archaeology report is that an archaeologist be present when any significant excavation work is taking place in that specific area. Cabot has noted that they are working closely with the local archaeological and historical society to facilitate this and has also committed to erecting a monument in the area to memorialize the indigenous peoples. SLP Communications Officer Mondi Lewis is calling out what the party says is political mischief on the part of its detractors. The St. Lucia Labour Party has received reports in Castries East and Castries South of canvassers wearing red t-shirts with the tagline, Keeping It Real, printed on the front, claiming to be from the SLP. 
We would like to make it clear that these branded persons do not represent the St. Lucia Labour Party and call on them to stop the misrepresentation. We call on the public to be vigilant as these persons masquerade in constituencies to create confusion and distractions. St. Lucians are ready to let their voices be heard and will not fall for these cheap tricks. Lewis says the SLP is ready and waiting for the election bell to be rung. Agriculture Minister Ezekiel Joseph is not taking the fall for the collapse of Winfresh. Instead, he says that wrong investments were a critical component in the organization's demise. He was a guest in the hot seat Wednesday night. The Minister of Agriculture, Ezekiel Joseph, has distanced himself from the demise of Winfresh WI. Joseph, who was a member of the Winfresh board, has been blamed for not doing enough to save the company. In a hot seat interview on Wednesday, Joseph insisted that being on the board had nothing to do with the organization's collapse. When it came as a government, um, in putting the board together as far as our nomination on the Winfresh board, when we revisit what's happening, because Winfresh is not only St. Lucia, eh? Winfresh is the other Winwood Islands, Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, right? That's the governments that own Winfresh, UK and Winfresh WI. What we realized in the case of St. Vincent, the Minister of Agriculture in St. Vincent was on the Winfresh board. What we realized in the case of Grenada, the Minister of Agriculture in Grenada was on the Winfresh board. So my colleague said, well, look, Minister, I think you should go on that Winfresh board with, an, with another individual. And it's a good thing they did that, right? Now, what caused the collapse of Winfresh? Yeah, well, people say, well, they blame Ezekiel because Ezekiel is on the board, and Ezekiel should not be on the board, but, I mean, it, it's happening all over the other Winwood Islands, so that's, that's not an issue. I didn't put myself on the board. The government put me on the board because they had confidence in me serving on the board. Instead, Joseph said that bad investments were a defining factor in Winfresh's closure. Winfresh bought over a failing company in the culture. Now it's called well, um, Sunfresh, it's called Sunfresh doing water, right? Winfresh invested in a, a, a failing company in St. Vincent called Vinci Fresh, right? Likewise in Grenada, never open, right? Every year, every year, these companies were losing millions of dollars, okay? Now, these companies, will, and the structure is so compl complicated. You have Winfresh UK, that is marketing the banners for us on, on behalf of St. Lucia and other, other um, things. And you have Winfresh WI, right? Winfresh WI is the parent company. Winfresh UK is a subsidiary of Winfresh WI. But what was happening is that Winfresh UK, UK was sending resources down to Winfresh WI. And what we realized is that Winfresh WI owed Winfresh UK over $10 million. The Windward Islands-based company, which primary activity was the sale and marketing of fair trade bananas, went into administration last year. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. The United Nations has launched a U.S. $29.2 million global funding appeal to help those affected by the eruptions of the La Sufra volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and other impacted countries. The eruptions of the La Sufra volcano are expected to displace close to 20,000 people, with over 12,700 evacuees now registered in public shelters and in private homes. Entire villages have been covered in ash, buildings damaged, schools and businesses closed, crops and livestock destroyed, and residents left with limited access to clean drinking water. Further eruptions are expected in the coming weeks. The appeal was launched on Tuesday, the 20th of April, by the UN Resident Coordinator, Didier Tribault. Basically, this UN Global Funding Appeal that we're launching today intends to, to mobilize the solidarity from the international community um, for a response that will cover uh, some of the needs, some of the gaps, only for the next six months. So we are launching today a US $29.2 million global funding appeal. This is an effort to protect the most vulnerable people that have been displaced 
all the affected people um, uh, by this crisis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and also the effect that this crisis is having in other neighboring countries. So Funding raised will provide immediate life-saving humanitarian aid, including cash assistance and clean water, and support a sustainable recovery, including through repairs to homes and support for livelihoods. Another priority is to continue preventing the spread of COVID-19. We are dealing with a crisis within the COVID crisis, and we fear the risk of spike of COVID cases with people in shelter. This is a very complex situation. There could be more eruptions. Uh, the situation can deteriorate very rapidly. The hurricane season is about to start in six weeks, and it has already, already been predicted to be above average. So we need to avoid a multiple crisis scenario. Greater in international support is needed. Uh, this will allow for us to rapidly uh, scale up, as I said, and support the government to respond to this growing humanitarian crisis. The UN and partners will also assess the economic, social and environmental impact on countries affected by the volcano, supporting with ash removal and improving environmental health conditions. And now this report from SVG TV on the tour of the Red Zone by the UN team and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. Prime Minister Gonzalez said that the communities have long faced multiple threats from nature, including sea erosion, hurricanes, unseasonal and excessive rainfall, and most recently, the eruption of the volcano in a time when the entire nation is battling the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Gonzalez said there is quite a bit of work that will need to be that will need to be done in the area as homes which were not totally destroyed will need extensive repairs. The Prime Minister said he wanted the United Nations officials to see firsthand the level of devastation unfolding on the island as a result of the eruption of the La Sufra volcano. The combination of forces of nature pile up from the last event with rainfall, excessive rainfall, and landslides and mudslides and the rest. The impact of the rumbling and rolling of stones too and the, 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 the ash fall. And on top of that, what we are seeing with sea erosion. So it's a... Uh, it's it's the, the multiple problems. In this case, three of them related to nature. That's why several persons in the delegation from the UN using the word to describe here apocalyptic. UN resident coordinator for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Trebouk, described what he saw as apocalyptic, noting that his team will be working alongside the government of SVG to provide assistance to those in need. United Nations to, to help the Vincentian and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines yeah, to, with not only humanitarian assistance, and, and, uh, to, supply, to help the government supply the, the most basic needs like water, like food, like cash voucher, like health, and help with the cleanup of the ashes and all related environmental health issues, but also to recover from this crisis, to rehabilitate the agriculture, to uh, look after housing and the shelter, immediate needs, but also more longer term needs so that people can return safely as soon as possible and within the, 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 the current risk that exists. Now in news further afield, a Columbus, Ohio police officer shot and killed a black teenage girl after she allegedly attempted to cut two females with a knife. That's according to officials and body camera footage. The body camera footage has been put in slow motion and blurred by the Columbus Division of Police. More in this report from CNN. Protests in Columbus, Ohio, the scene of another deadly police shooting. This happened minutes before the verdict was handed down in the Derek Chauvin trial, and the victim here is a 16-year-old girl. According to police, the officer fired after the teen tried to cut two other girls with a knife, but in the graphic body camera video of the incident, it shows a very chaotic scene. It is incredibly difficult to discern exactly what is happening here, and there are still so many questions that need to be answered. CNN's Ryan Young is live for us in Columbus with the latest. Uh, Ryan, what are you learning about this? This is a, it, it is very difficult to understand what's happening in this, in this video. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then look, protesters even took to the street last night to say they were very upset about this. The fact that they released this video so quickly, you can understand what the city was trying to do in terms of letting people know what position their officer was in. From what we know right now, there was some sort of disturbance call. There was obviously a fight going on. When the officer arrives, he made a split second decision. Of course, some people in the community don't think that's the right one. We're going to warn you though the video is, is difficult to watch it's disturbing we're going to show it to you in real time the first time through take a watch So Makriya Bryant is the young lady who was in it. She was 16 years old. The officer arrived and said he saw a knife uh, and then opened fire, unfortunately, shooting that young lady four times. Uh, she did die. Uh, we've also uh, have the video slowed down. Now, this the police department actually slowed this video down as they released this video. Take a watch of this version of it as police show what their officer was dealing with. So I'm not sure you still see this video, but, but right now uh, the we officer do. approaches. There is a knife. There's some there's some movement there, and then he opens fire. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who are upset with this decision. So a lot of questions will be going on. The officer is then put on paid administrative leave. It normally happens after a shooting like this. On top of that, of course, there's calls in the community for more of an investigation. But listen to what the mayor had to say during this difficult situation. Not just the mayor, my father. The city of Columbus lost a 15 year old girl today. We know based on this footage, the officer took action to protect another young girl in our community. But a family's grieving tonight. And this young 15-year-old girl will never be coming home. Yeah, you can understand all the emotions that are involved in this. Brianna, look, there are so many questions that are still attached to this. Another police-involved shooting, of course, someone could say that the officer felt he was protecting the other two young ladies. Um, it was reported at one point that Makaya might have actually called police herself for help. So many questions in this with emotions running so high across this country, especially when it comes to police involved shootings with black um, youth at this point. It is uh, just very difficult day ahead for Columbus and we'll see what happens as it plays out. Brianna. It is, and we know you'll be digging on those questions. Ryan Young for us in Ohio, thank you. You're watching the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. There's more coming up after the break.